Well, welcome, real estate fans, to another episode of Seattle Real Estate Podcast. I am Dan Edwards, your host, and I'm here to provide you with the inside scoop of living, working, and playing across the greater Seattle area and the east side. It is Wednesday, March 27th. It's my brother's birthday. Happy birthday, Tim. I wish you a very happy day. I'm taking you out to dinner tonight. Uh, We are coming to you live on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Please feel free to subscribe, like, and comment. We can uh, answer your questions in real time, so feel free to shoot us a quick question if you got one. Um, Please do, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, um, like, subscribe, and recommend our podcast. We would love for you to do that. Um, It's going to be a great show today. We are going to talk about what you need to know if you're thinking of moving to Seattle. So this is for those people that are outside of the area looking to move to the Pacific Northwest and make Seattle area your home. We're going to give you some tips there. And during our mortgage moment segment, we're going to talk about how to use reverse mortgages in a home purchase with our good friend, Tucker Maxwell. And then we'll be rounding out the show with one of our local businesses, uh, Brandon Brockway Wing of Key Ring of Key Home Inspections. We rely on him a lot for a lot of expertise when it comes to um, the wellness of your home. It's going to be a great show. So make sure you grab some popcorn, grab a notepad, and let's dive in to our Real Talk segment right now. All right, top 10 things you need to know if you're relocating to Seattle. So I've been a Pacific Northwest resident my entire life. I grew up in Camas, Washington, which is a suburb of Vancouver, Washington, which is a suburb of Portland, Oregon. Um, and it was kind of a small town. I moved to Seattle in 93. I am rocking the flannel in honor of Seattle. I love the town. It's beautiful. It is surrounded by lakes, mountains, uh, and the Puget Sound. If, uh, if you've ever, um, I, I, I honestly, I've been to a lot of different places and I really haven't found a place that has the diversity and ecosystem that we have here in Seattle. So the first thing you need to know if you're thinking about moving to Seattle is there is a giant lake in the middle of the city, a giant lake. It's called Lake Washington. And if you look at a map at an overhead, you'll see Seattle is this sliver. The downtown Seattle is a sliver of area. On one side, it's a Puget Sound or specifically Elliott Bay. That's on the west side. And on the east side is Lake Washington. Lake Washington, I don't have the statistics, but it's a big ass lake and it's right there. So um, the one thing that I'm always impressed as when I'm flying into Seattle is to realize how much water is everywhere, which is definitely one of those things that people kind of give us a hard time is it's always raining. And I believe our good friend Tucker said it was pouring down rain in Bellevue just now. So, yes, it does rain a lot. And you can see the evidence of the rain as you're surrounded by that. So a giant lake in the middle, and that's important. Why is that important? Because you got to know the traffic patterns. So Seattle has a lot of commuting, right? Just like any city. And so if you're to take a look at a map and maybe you're doing some research and you're trying to decide, hey, where do we want to live when we're thinking about Seattle? So I'll give you an idea. If you're heading southbound from into Seattle, you're going to run into traffic in the morning. Same thing. If you're heading north, you're going to run into traffic in the morning. And then if you're actually going across the lake, so you're coming from the east side into Seattle, you're going to get traffic. And also, if you're going from Seattle to the east side, you're going to get traffic. So I know that sounds like, wow, I can't wait to get to Seattle with all of this traffic. But the truth is, is once the, the commute dies down, you can get around the city pretty quickly. You time yourself like. I don't know, maybe around 10 or 11 o'clock. You can get yourself to anywhere in the city in about 40 minutes. You can get to the east side. You can get to Seattle. Um, But just kind of knowing like the timeline, like if you're going to if you're going to try to hit Seattle, let's say, and you're going to take one of the two freeways that goes from the east side, which is I-90 into Seattle, you want to make sure Mariners game is not going on. Because if you run into a Mariners game, you're going to run into a kind of a lot more traffic than normal. So just learning those traffic patterns uh, is going to help you establish um, that. So um, so that's uh, that. The other thing you need to know, the third thing you need to know is the school districts. 
Now, I, um, you know, I raised my kids on the east side. And the one thing we know is that Seattle School District is not one of the highly rated school districts. And a lot of kids have to kind of get their own transportation to and from school. So if you're looking for quality schools and you're moving to the Seattle area, you might look to the east side. You might even look a little further north, like Edmonds School District, North Shore School District. And I'm not here to dog on Seattle School District. There are definitely some great schools and great. Um, and I think you just have to kind of know what you're looking for. Definitely do some research on that. Now, neighborhoods. Let's talk about some of the neighborhoods that you get when you get to Seattle. Well, a lot of the techies like some of the areas like Lower Queen Anne, Capitol Hill, um, the Denny Triangle. These are areas in downtown Seattle where the commute to work is really just a walk or maybe an e-scooter or e-bike. Um, Fremont's a great neighborhood. So is Ballard. Um, and then if you're looking kind of affordability, you're going to find more of the affordability in the south. Now, that's if again, if you're looking at Seattle and you look to the south, um, you're looking at areas like Columbia City, Rainier. You're looking at uh, South Park. You're looking at um, Georgetown. There's definitely more affordability, but some of these neighborhoods are a little rougher, too. So make sure you explore, you know, an, an area where you can find a balance between affordability and a safe neighborhood. Um, one of the cool things uh, about Seattle is we have light rail that runs from downtown all the way past our airport. So our airport is about 30 minutes south of downtown Seattle. And actually, um, on a, on a, if, you, if you skip traffic, you can get there from downtown Seattle in, in about 15 to 20 minutes, actually, um, as that goes. Now, another uh, great thing to know about living in Seattle or moving to Seattle is sports teams. So first off, we've got the Seattle Seahawks, which have a Super Bowl ring and should have had a second one. Anyways, we're not going to talk about that. Um, we have the Sounders uh, Football Club, a great, great soccer club. It's won, uh, uh, I think, like three or four. Uh, Tucker, give me a fingers. How, how many uh, world? How many? OK, two. They've won two championships. Uh, let's see. And then we have the uh, Seattle Mariners, who have actually never been to a World Series. So that sucks. Um, but this is our year. Uh, so there's that. We also have um, the Seattle Rain basketball, uh, women's basketball, and we have the uh, Seawolves. Am I missing anybody? I don't, know. I don't know. There might be some other obscure sport that they want to call Major League. Uh, my my favorite's the uh, rugby and the football, but that's just me. Next, we have uh, moving to Seattle is World Cap Class Theater. So we've got the Paramount Theater. We've got the Fifth Avenue Theater uh, that, that are doing off-Broadway musicals. Um, we also have the Showbox for music. So that's the grunge, right? Um, Nirvana Pearl Jam played there. Um, there's a, always some great. And I, I, I think I have a post of like the top 10 uh, great um, uh, uh, theater venues. I, I mean, this is not in Seattle, but it's in the area is the Gorge, one of the best ones. And that's over across the mountains and all that stuff. But I consider that's a Seattle area thing. So uh, world class theater. Um, the last thing that you need to know about moving to see not the last thing number nine number nine is uh the east side so i uh raised my kids over on the east side um i definitely uh think that when people kind of look at coming to seattle they're coming for a number of reasons it could be to come to work for amazon which is in downtown but amazon also has campuses on the east side google has campuses on the east side microsoft's redmond from the east side so i don't want to eliminate that but it's actually a conversation for next week we're going to talk about the benefits of the east side but knowing that if you're thinking about relocating to seattle you also want to dig into the east side all right lastly the most important thing from a real estate standpoint is seattle is a competitive market and what i mean by that is uh we are at 1.22 months of inventory so that's an all-time low inventory um we're basically finding that uh, homes will move quickly however there is uh our certain market conditions with interest rates which has actually come down and we'll talk to tucker a little bit about that um, that are um, creating a little less competition in some instances. But in general, if you're going to live in Seattle and you're looking for a single family house in, in Seattle, we're talking these neighborhoods that I mentioned, it's going to be very competitive. So be prepared for that. It's not, um, it's not uh, anything different. So, all right. So that includes our real talk. So those are 10 things that you need to know if you're thinking of moving to Seattle. So um, next we're gonna welcome our good friend, Tucker Maxwell. We're gonna be talking about reverse mortgages. So come back after this short,
commercial break, which is right about... Are you wearing too many hats in your small business? Finding yourself wondering where the time went? Do you ever get frustrated with technology that should just work? Then you need nerds to go. America's small business IT department. 425-800-NERD. At nerds to go we provide friendly, professional, and reasonably priced solutions for small business owners. From network troubleshooting to hardware repair or training, let nerds to go be your IT department. Call nerds to go today. We'll come to you. 425-800-NERD. 